We're in the second week of July and it's time for another gardening update. If you're wondering about where the shed is, it's back there, you just can't see it. Last week I showed you this pepper plant that I grafted eight different kinds of peppers onto. It looks like about five or six of them will probably make it. And a couple won't. I even grafted the black pearl hybrid onto this one. I did the grafting in a light rain, so I didn't take any notes. We'll figure out what they are if they produce peppers. The Heritage Big Jim pepper is finally setting peppers. It was a little bit behind everything else. One pepper plant that's going to be especially productive this year is the Ahi Rico. It's just loaded with peppers from top to bottom. Another pepper plant that has a lot of peppers on it is the Sugar Rush Cream. I'll be testing one of these out very soon. I harvested some of our beets so we could make some homemade pickled beets. We both really like those a lot. This is the bull's blood and the red foliage on it is really cool looking out in the garden I think. Then we have the Detroit dark red. I got a couple of those. And then we have a few of the Solyndra. And just for the fun of it I'm growing one mammoth red mango bee in a container. Here's a look at some of our carrots. I pulled a few of each type. The golden color ones are really getting big. It seems like the carrots were lagging behind a little bit this year. These are albino bullnose peppers. It's always been a very good early producer for us and I picked the rest of them so it would keep producing. I picked a few sugar rush cream peppers. It looks like it's going to be a very good producer. This is our first Ruia pepper that has gotten ripe. It's not fully ripe but I think it's close enough. We're starting to get a few Jimmy Nardello peppers. The Buena Mulata pepper has been producing peppers for a while and it just keeps pumping them out. The Sleeping Lady tomato looks like it's going to be a good producer. And the Kookaburro cackle has more tomatoes than any plant we have, I think. I really hope I like this one because we're going to have a bunch of them. Rosella purple is a great tasting tomato and we have a decent number of those too. In this video you're going to see quite a bit of white dust on the plants and that's diatomaceous earth. On the tomatoes the diatomaceous earth was to fight white flies and worms. That previous plant was a barony and so is this one. This is one of the tomatoes in the grow bag and it's called lemon ice. It has quite a few on it. We're getting quite a few ears on the corn now and the plants are getting really tall. Now that I'm next to the plants, we'll look up and you can see what I mean. Some of these plants are about 9 feet tall now. Here's a look at the corn and the beans from another angle and you can see just how tall they are. Some of the corn is almost as tall as the bananas. Of course the bananas will just keep getting taller. Most of the pole beans are up past the bamboo extensions that I put on the cage and they're still growing. The cucumbers are finally starting to grow well and we're getting a few of those. We're finally starting to get some pole beans to set on but it seems like we just don't have as many as we should have. But even though it seems like they're lagging a little bit I'm thankful for what we have. As you can see it's a little bit like a jungle when you walk between the cages. I have five different types of pole beans planted in these two rows. And on the end of one row I have a cage that has melons growing in it. They've only set on one small melon that I've seen so far. Just beyond this cage you can see the japonica corn so let's go look at it. The japonica corn is much shorter than the hybrid corn but it's starting to get ears too. I'm crossing this one with our hybrid variety so I'm removing the tassels from this one so the only pollinator will be the hybrid. I bought that dwarf Orinoco in the tomato cage. It's not very tall yet. Towering over it is the Musa Velotina. They produce pink bananas and 
we've gotten bananas the last two years. Towering over the Musa velatina is the Musa basju and is probably about 10 feet tall now and still growing. I purchased some banana seeds from two different species and planted them but no sign of any coming up yet. This is one of our F2 purple flash hybrids and it's got an interesting color to it once the peppers start to ripen. I would be happy if I could stabilize this one just the way it is. This is another F2 purple flash and its peppers are starting to turn orange and black. With some having a hint of an olive and yellow color. We don't have too many blackberry plants but we are getting some blackberries and we picked probably a couple of quarts so far. The fennel is about six feet tall now and amazingly enough I haven't seen a single caterpillar on it yet. Here's another look at the bananas from a different angle. Over next to the storm shelter the sleeping lady plant I have there is doing very well and has lots of tomatoes on it. Another plant I have over there is a dwarf purple heart and it's got about six tomatoes that are kind of clustered together. I've never tasted one of these yet and I'm looking forward to it. The Rose of Sharon is starting to bloom and it won't be long till the hummingbirds start to migrate through. It's my favorite flower for hummingbirds. Another flower that the hummingbirds like is the bee balm and we have two different colors of it and they're in full bloom now. I've seen a few monarchs on the bee balm this year and we also occasionally see swallowtails, black and tiger. This is a rosella purple we have in a grow bag and it's got quite a few tomatoes. Once the tomatoes start to ripen we should have plenty. The petunias in the petunia tower are doing great, but I should have planted the red ones a bit higher. I'm hoping that top one will trail a lot more and cover up that bare spot. If you haven't checked your sunflowers lately, you might check them for caterpillars because we've been getting a lot of them. They usually start out on the lower leaves and then move up the plant, skeletonizing the leaves as they go. When we have a lot of them, I usually put some soapy water in a bucket and just cut off leaves and drop them in the water. If you check the underside of the leaves, sometimes you'll be able to catch them before they hatch. The little butterfly that lays these eggs usually lays in clusters of about 50 eggs or more. They can do a lot of damage in a short amount of time and they usually catch me by surprise. Last week I showed you the four grafts that I did onto this sun gold tomato plant and all four grafts are still alive. So if they produced tomatoes we would end up having five different tomatoes on this one plant. Again there's no practical reason for this. It's just for my own entertainment. I picked most of the Cubanelle peppers and all of these came off of one plant. This is our one day's harvest and I would say it's not too bad. And it doesn't include a couple of cucumbers that we picked later. I mentioned the diatomaceous earth on the tomato plants. If you look closely there's a tomato hornworm that it killed. You can see a little worm damage that they've done on this kookaburro cackle plant. When applying diatomaceous earth, it's a good idea to wear a respirator because you don't want to breathe the stuff. It's an abrasive. I just try to shoot it up underneath the foliage and some of it ends up on the top and some on the bottom. It's helped quite a bit with some white flies that we've had lately. As if we didn't have enough types of sweet potatoes, I got two ornamental types to go with the edible types that we have. Don't forget to like this video and share it. I hope your garden's doing great. We'll see you next time.